Step 4, Maxwell's second equation. In this step, we're going to uh, consider a similar equation like in the previous case for electric fields, but for magnetic fields. So what's the Gauss's law for magnetic fields? Let's try to apply the same logic that we did in the case of an electric field. So we, we're going to have some closed surface and we're going to consider a magnetic field going through this surface um, represented by some magnetic flux and we want to know what equation does it obey. So let's just follow the logic of uh, Maxwell's first equation and define the magnetic flux going through the surface as the following surface integral. And we are integrating over a closed area represented by this little circle of the magnetic field um, and we take the dot product with the, uh, with the area vectors all, all located all on the surface. And we ask the question, does it make sense to write the total flux as some sum of these uh, uh, magnetic charges over some, uh, uh, some constant k? And the thing about uh, magnetic uh, fields is that they are not produced by magnetic monopoles. That's why I'm highlighting this this summation over here. This would suggest that there are magnetic monopoles that are producing these magnetic fields, like in the same, like in the case of electric fields, in the same way. But as far as we can tell, no such magnetic monopoles exist. We say as far because uh, this is an empirical observation. In nature, we have never observed a single uh, north pole of a magnet or a single south pole of a magnet. For example, if you look at a bar magnet, always you've got a North Pole and a South Pole. The magnetic field produced goes from the North Pole down to the South Pole. So you can say, okay, if I have a, 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 a magnetic field produced by a bar, bar magnet, can I just split the bar magnet? You can split it, but it's not going to help. Even if you split it, you're going to produce two smaller bar magnets, and both of them will have a North Pole and a South Pole, and a North Pole and a South Pole. Uh, why this is, uh, we, don't, we don't know, but in classical, classical electromagnetic theory, magnetic monopoles uh, are not allowed. In modern theories, they, um, they are allowed to exist, but we have never observed them experimentally. So how does this affect our Gauss's law for magnetic uh, fields? How does it affect the flux going through uh, a closed surface? Well, what we can do is we can take our bar magnet and we can stick it inside our uh, our spherical surf surface. So now we have a uh, we have a source of a magnetic field. Uh, sorry, uh, magnetic field inside the surface that also goes through the surface. So there is definitely flux going through uh, uh, this area. The question now is, if we integrate this flux over the entire surface, what happens? Well, this scenario maybe reminds you of uh, what we saw in an example in the previous case when we had uh, two electric charges that had the same size but opposite sign. And in that case, we showed that the flux of the electric field canceled when we integrated over the entire surface. And that's exactly the case here as well. The total flux given by the surface uh, integral over a closed surface of the magnetic field is zero. And this is Maxwell's second equation. And it's zero all the time. And that's the result of the fact that we do not have magnetic monopoles just like we have for electric fields. Electric fields can be produced by point charges, uh, electric monopoles. In the magnetic field, this is not the case. We always have at least one so-called positively charged, one North Pole and one negatively charged or the South Pole. And it doesn't matter how many of these little bar magnets you stick inside your sphere, the total effect on the magnetic uh, uh, flux passing through the surface will be such that it always cancels if you consider a closed surface enclosing all of your sources of magnetic fields. So that concludes our discussion of Maxwell's second equation.